All right, the Twitter storm is here. Kim Horcher, lovely and brilliant uh, scorcher from uh, Nerd Alert, is going to present today. Kim, go. Okay. Um, Meg Veronica asks, are you concerned that corruption would reach the state level, in which case it would be too late for Wolfpack? Good question. I am concerned. We got to go. <laughs> we got to <laughs> hurry, man. I'm serious. Like, they took over Kansas, right? So Kansas is hopeless. The Kochs did a coup there where they kicked out all the already incredibly conservative Republicans and elected Republicans that only serve the Koch brothers. So, and they're coming, they're coming to other states. So, yes, we've got a window and we've got to jump through that window. It's challenging, but it could definitely be done. So join us right now at wolf-pack.com. All right, next. All right, Dustin Byington asks a question that I know the answer to. Would you say you have a positive or negative self-image? What do you mean? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was just telling Jesus before the show began, I'm working out now. I'm like, watch out. You might not recognize me because I'll be so damn ripped. <laughs> yes, I've got a positive self-image. I'm very aware of my shortcomings, okay? Whether it's weight, whether it's the spatial reasoning. I mean, I couldn't find my way from here to home, okay? I get lost like that. I can't do physics if my life depended on it. But there's some things I'm, I think I'm decent at, so I'm slightly unbearable in that way. Next. Flint's Doubting Tom asks, would you be willing to do an annual member conference in, say, Las Vegas, Chicago, NYC, or Los Angeles? That is a fascinating idea, and I don't know the answer to that. But it, like, we never, literally never thought about that before. So I'm going to actually kick it up to the committee. There's no committee, but we'll, we'll talk it through here internally because it's a good idea. Next. Doc Daniels asks, my favorite movie from the 80s is Raiders of the Lost Ark. What's yours? Oh, I mean, there's a million great movies, especially from the 80s. Of course, that's when I grew up, so I love going to the movies. Anyway, I, I look, I just, Dead Poet Society. I'm hokey, I'm corny, I love that stuff. Carpe diem! You shouldn't be surprised by that. All right, next. Oh, Captain. Ahmed Hamid asks, would you ever interview Bill O'Reilly? If so, oh, if you did, what's the first question you are going to ask? Well, would I interview him? Definitely. Oh, course. That would be such a fun interview. Who doesn't want to do that, right? First question I would ask him is, tides go in, tides go out. Can you explain that? <laughs> next. Juna Picaranian asks, which poker games do you play? Oh, that's an easy one. Uh, I just play uh, Texas Hold. Uh, look, with Michael Schur and Ben, we used to play all those different, like, one-eyed Jack, two-eyed Sailor, whatever. I hate those games. I play it because I like the guys and when we played it and stuff, but Texas Hold is the real game. Next. Ryan Hayes asks, if you were stuck on a desert island with one politician of your choice, who would that politician be? Okay, I'm going to assume that this is a non-sexual question. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Alan Grayson. Interesting. Why is that? That dude is smart and he figures things out. He's actually gotten more bipartisan things uh, passed through Congress than almost any Democrat, even though he is, I don't know if you can say the most progressive, but he's certainly in the running for the most progressive, one of the most progressive congressmen, and he can still find a way to work with Republicans to get things passed, like auditing the Fed. So if you're on a des desert island, one, the conversation would be fun, two, he's more likely to get you off of it. So, all right, God bless. Next. Ed Arvelez asks, may I ask you to pretty please stop reading out loud the clever story titles. They are so funny and you ruin them every time you do. <laughs> so you're going to do me like that. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, you're right. Uh, and I shall try to refrain. I think I read one of them earlier today in the show. Okay, I'll try to stop from now on. Good point. Next. Jack Attack Attacks asks, wow, what do you think the drinking age should be? I ask this because you always talk about how the age of consent should be lower. Correct. So should the drinking age. Drinking age should be 18. I, it always drives me crazy. The minute everybody turns 21, they forget about that issue and they say, oh, yeah, whatever, man. Right? But the reality is it was stupid when you were 18 to 21. It's still stupid now. Oh, if you can go and grab a rifle and go die for your country, get your legs blown off or shoot someone else in the head, and you can't get a beer? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. 18 is the correct answer. Next. Heidi Williams asks, I spend a lot of time on a plane. Do you have any book recommendations for me? Ah, interesting. Well, I'll just throw out a couple here. Just um, uh, the, the two books that actually had me learn a lot. Look, there's a lot of books that I love that were fun, like The Game of Thrones and stuff like that. But uh, the big short 
taught me why the economic collapse happened and why it's going to happen again. It's Michael Lewis's book. It's a great read. It's a really smart, really dives into it, and you begin to get a better sense of uh, why the collapse happened in 2008. And then Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Look, I, I got to be super honest with you and say I didn't believe 100% of the book. Like I, I got a sense that Perkins was ex exaggerating at different times. But overall, you get the clear sense that there are guys who were sent in by our government to go and co-opt foreign leaders, and he explains how they do it and how they say either you're going to play ball with us or there's going to be a coup or sometimes an assassination. You intimate it, and then uh, all of a sudden you either have those right-wing governments giving us all their natural resources, or back in the 70s, 80s, there'd be some plane crashes. And even to this day, from time to time, there's some convenient coups. So it's a really interesting book. All right, those are my two suggestions. That's Twitter Storm, Kim Horcher. Thank you very much. Everybody check out Nerd Alert. Go.